is New Day Northwest. Now from the Premiera Blue Cross Studio, here's Margaret Larson. Good morning, everybody. We are outside, I think for the first time ever from our new studio, and we're outside because we're talking about the chalk art festival that's coming up and seeing some chalk art for ourselves. This weekend is the second annual Pacific Northwest Chalk Festival, which features the work of artists from around the world, including this particular one from Seattle. Welcome back to Naomi Haverland. How are you? Good, how are you? Let's talk about this thing really took off. As soon as the festival started, people really appreciated this art. And part of what's kind of wonderful about it is that it isn't necessarily forever art. Exactly, yes. It's only going to be this weekend and then it'll probably be gone. And so. then it'll be gone. Yes. Let's take a look at some of your work and others' work because one of the things that we find so fascinating about this is that a lot of it is looks 3D when you take a look at it, which is yes. just a magnificent thing. So we have some photos of your work and other artists. We'd like to see it. Tell us a little bit more about, about this particular piece? Uh, that's a piece I did in Occidental Square. It's a flower and so when you're looking at it from the wrong angle, which we're showing now, it's all <laughs> stretched out, but when you look at it from the right angle, uh, it's, it's standing up. Yeah, it should look 3D. That is amazing. Now there are more of them. Tell us which ones are yours. Is that yours? That's mine. Yeah, I did that a couple weeks ago. Amazing. Where was that? That was in Michigan. In Michigan. So yeah. you travel all over to do this. Yeah, just like all the uh, artists will be traveling in <gasps> today. This is a... I can't believe that looks yeah. real. That's by Chris Carlson. He'll be there this weekend. Amazing. And that's yeah. something to think of as we look through that's all Chris of this. That's Chris as well. These guys who do this internationally will all be in one place in Redmond, right? Correct. Yeah. To put, to put this art up or, up or down or however you... Yeah, down, <laughs> you on, the ground, down yeah. on the ground. Down on the ground so that we can see it. And it's just remarkable. When did the 3D chalk art kind of become more popular? Um, it's become more popular in the last decade, I believe. Um, there was one artist that discovered the anamorphic technique of stretching the artwork out so that it looks good in a photograph. Yep. Um, and so that's kind of the concept is just to make something fun to take photos of, sometimes to get in and pose with it. Right. Now, can you see it with your naked eye or do you have to look no. through a lens? So just like this right now, you're at the right angle and you have to look through a lens. Your eye, will it'll just look stretched out and all wonky. But when you get the camera on it, you'll be able to see the 3D effect. And so that's what we're looking at now. This is out in front of our studio. And I felt so bad because, I mean, we were talking about the ephemeral nature of this art. You actually started on this yesterday. <laughs> yeah. The cleanup crew cleaned it up overnight, so it yes. was gone this morning. So you started again, what, about 6 o'clock or so? About 6.30. I got here and realized everything yesterday had been washed away. Someone was doing their job really well. So I can't believe you did this in, in just this short amount of time. So let's walk back here. One of your associates is working on it. We yeah. see your palette of chalk. So as I look at it with my eye, I see this long stretched version and I also yeah. see the shadow. What's the trick to sort of the mathematics of getting the shadow and the 3D elements correct? The shadow is just a little bit of a, a hazy black whatever to make it sort of look like it pops out. The, the actual image, I draw it the way I want it to be seen. Then I take it onto the computer and stretch it out to compensate for the perspective. Right. So it ends up getting really long. And so when you look at it from the side, it just looks really long. But then when you look at it from the right angle, it should look the way I originally drew it. It's amazing. Now, as an artist, do you mind that this is temporary? That I the don't. weather washes it away or that it just I don't. I, I kind of like that it's temporary because I feel like if I was doing something permanent, I would have to do a much better job. <laughs> and I would probably stress out a lot more. <laughs> but I think it's kind of like life. The, you know, the preciousness of it is part of what, exactly, what yeah. makes this really, really yeah. special. The people that actually come out to see it will get a treat and it's only there for a little short amount of time. So what can we expect at the festival? Uh, you can expect to see things a lot bigger than this because we did this in a couple hours, but people have three days to really create some masterpieces. So you'll be able to see some 3D artwork, some more classical artwork. You'll be able to see all different styles. Um, if you come on Friday, you'll get to see a lot of it getting started. You'll get to see the artist drawing it in and everything. You get to see the process. It's kind of inspiring. You can talk to the artist, ask them about their... Uh, what they're doing, their ideas. Yeah, that's one of the best parts of this. It's at Redmond yeah. Town Center, so you can shop, you can get a bite to eat, you can do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, the to. sidewalk sales going on as well. Exactly. Plus, you can talk to the artists and find out more, and maybe yeah. get interested in this yourself. Absolutely, the kids can participate. There's lots of opportunities for the kids to participate, or they can just uh, talk with the artists. Talk, artists love to talk about their process and inspire the kids to try it on their own too. How many artists will be there? I believe there's about 15. 
Okay, so we'll see some amazing big stuff. Let's look a little bit at your materials. Is there anything different about the kind of chalk that you use than what we might be used to as kids when we did sidewalk it's, chalk? It's chalk pastels, so it's not like a sidewalk chalk. It has a little mm -hmm. more pigment than a sidewalk mm -hmm. chalk, but it still washes away just like a sidewalk chalk would. Do you ever use anything else in acrylic or anything to overlay with it, or is it all chalk all the time? It's mostly chalk. Some people use a tempera paint under it because then the chalk sticks to it a little bit better. And stands out a little bit more. How did yeah. you get started doing this? Um, I started doing it as a way to give my own paintings more publicity. I would reproduce my paintings onto the pavement. Right. And then I ran out of paintings to reproduce, so I just started <laughs> doing the chalk. Do you like this better? Yeah, I like the interactiveness of it, being out in the public. I like to be able to talk with people and yeah. see how people react. I get a lot of feedback, which is fun. Sometimes not fun, but sometimes fun. I think it's so. great because then as, as viewers, we get a chance to go out, talk to the artists, see the art, and it seems less intimidating somehow than if you had to totally. go to a museum or exactly. a place yeah. and pay you know, to get in. You can come and it's just part of life. Exactly, um, yeah. Which I think makes it a little more it's, integrated. It's a little so, bit of a performance as well as yes, an art. It's yeah. a performance and it also has some planning to it, right? You've got to figure out what you're going to do before you go out and just start sketching yeah. in, a, in a place like you did today. So what's the planning process like for this piece, let's say? Oh, uh, For this piece, I tried to come up with something that would be fairly small that could be done in a short amount of time. <laughs> Thank goodness uh, that you had to do it twice. Yeah. <laughs> and then I uh, just drew it out on, I used my iPad to draw like it out so. and do all my planning. Um, you can see the design right here with the the way I wanted it to be seen and versus Is it the, okay if I pick that up? Yeah, totally. Just show it because yeah. what's neat is that you've got this on graph so you know exactly what the yeah, what so, the dimensions are. So then you can grid it out and put a grid on the sidewalk and then just follow the and grid. And do the same thing. Yeah. What is the largest piece you've ever done? Ooh, one time I had to do one that was about 40 feet tall. It was a, uh, a, a ski chairlift that was supposed to go over people's heads yeah. so that was that was pretty difficult <laughs> and do you have a favorite artist or people who inspire you that we might be able to see this weekend or look oh up? yeah yeah um all the artists that are there this weekend are really amazing some of my favorites are ever galvez that will be there he is so amazing he does all these like colorful highlights that are just so beautiful and they don't even really show up and the pictures don't do it justice. Seeing it in person is just so beautiful. It's the way to do it. Yeah. So we invite people to go out to Redmond Town Center. In fact, the second annual Pacific Northwest Chalk Fest is this Friday through Sunday at the Town Center. And as you mentioned, people can come out on Friday and kind of see the art develop if they come back a couple of days. Food, activities for kids, live music, sidewalk sales, go out and enjoy plenty of stuff for the whole family. And it's do. free. And it's free. Thank you very much. I hope they don't wash this away. Can we keep it for a little bit? As long as we get a picture, we're good to go. Okay. <laughs> very good. Thank you both very much. After the break, we're going to talk about the latest on the Russia investigation um, into the electoral hacking that happened in 2016 and maybe happening again with double agent Naveed Jamali. We'll be right back.